Today, I'm going to show you how I got this board perfectly flat without the use of a jointer. Let's get started. So the first thing that you need to do here is just go ahead and measure your planer bed. And I just subtract about a quarter inch off of that measurement so that I rip it down to just under the size of that bed. That way it's not rubbing up against the sides, but you still maximize the board that you can run through. And then second thing, you just need something flat. So this is a old scrap piece of melamine from a previous project, hence that caulk line in the middle. And you just want to make sure it's perfectly flat. And this melamine on the floor should be flat. It's been sitting for a while. And, um, but as long as it's flat, you should be good to go. Now, next thing is just to cut off the fence. And what I'm going to do here is take a measurement of the board, which is three quarter inch, and then I'm going to add about half an inch to that. And then make a cut and flip it over because I couldn't get the whole thing in one pass. I had this little bit at the end and the trick here, raise up that guard, stick your blade back into the kerf, and then you can nip off the rest of that and it's going to be a perfect fit. And I'm going to steal off of my old planer sled the screws and go ahead and screw this new one on a countersinking so that I don't split the melamine and then just leave a little bit of a gap so that it's not hanging down. So the back or the bottom of the sled is towards me right now so I'm leaving about maybe a 16th or a 30 second above that um, so that it's not going to catch as it runs through the planer and cause any problems. And here you can see that just slight gap there. And just like that we have a new sled. And now I'm going to teach you how to use one of these bad boys. First thing you want to do is get a board that you want to plane. Put it on there, but all the way up against the fence. Okay, and once it's up against the fence, you're going to feed this into the planer this way, which means because your fence is going to hold the board onto the plane or onto the sled, and the planer is going to pull this whole thing forward. It pulls your board through and then it cuts. And so you want this, the um, fence in the front, not in the back. In the back, it's not doing anything. In the front, it's stopping the board from moving off of the sled. This way, you don't need any hot glue to secure this board in place. I used to do it with hot glue, and I had it break off too many times because I didn't use enough. So this is a much better way to do it. Now that you have it on there, you check to see if you have any gaps underneath. And this has just a slight gap here in the middle. So I'm gonna get some little wooden shims. You can also use paper. I prefer to use paper in some cases because you can get it really thin. And you just wanna support this so when you push on this, it doesn't flex anymore. And the whole point of these shims is to keep the board in its natural state by supporting it in the bow. Otherwise the planer itself will flatten the board with the rollers and you don't want that to happen. Otherwise you're just gonna keep that bow and it's gonna spring back after it's done. And once you have that all done with your shims in place, tucked inside of your sled so that it doesn't interrupt with the planer on the edges, it'll, <laughs> if you have them sticking out, just rip those right out. So you wanna make sure that they're nice and tucked in. Then you're ready to start running this through the planer. Now there's not much of a trick to this other than you just use the planer as it was always intended to be used. You're gonna run the board right through. I do like to make sure that it's raised up high enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and just raise this up probably higher than it needs to be to make sure that I have enough clearance and then I'm gonna lower it down. And then remember, in the middle, that board was a little, a little bit higher. So we want to just have this so it's just barely gonna be touching on this little depth gauge. Um, and then you're gonna take a thicker cut in the middle. If you do too much of a cut uh, or plan for too much of a cut, and then you end up taking like a, over an eighth of an inch, you're gonna overload your planer and it's just gonna shut down and you're gonna to have to redo the whole process. So the first one is the only one you have to worry about. After that, you just slowly work your way down just like you'd be planing a board until you get it nice and flat and max that. So now I'm gonna show you real quick 
in real time here how I set this up. So I just put this into the planer just slightly and lower it down until it just barely touches. And then once I get it tuned in, it's ready to rip, run it through, and then listen to it. Listen how you don't hear much, and then all of a sudden you can hear it starting. It's cutting more and then tapers off there at the end. And you know that you're cutting right in the middle of that board and um, what you're waiting for, and you're gonna see this here, you're waiting to hear a consistent cut all the way across the board and then you know you're good to go. And that's it. One nice flat board ready to flip over and go ahead and plane the other side. Now, you don't have to worry about the entire board being perfect at this point because you're gonna wanna plane this side again um, after you run it through, hit the other side, then flip it. Uh, but as long as you're spanning all the way across on the entirety of the board, so you know this section is flat, all the way across here, and this section slide all the way across here, and we're flat in the middle. Um, even if you have divots in the very center of the board, that's gonna be okay. You're gonna do just fine. The planer's not gonna mess with that, and it'll clean the rest of this up. So that's it. That's a tutorial on how to flat board without a joiner using a planer said the proper way. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something new, I'd appreciate a subscribe, a like, a comment. Uh, how would you do it? You know, this is not to say you don't need a jointer. You do. I would much prefer to be doing this with a jointer, but to have a 12 inch jointer would be very expensive for my little garage shop. Um, that's the whole process. Hope you enjoyed it. And check out this video on how to align your planar in-feed-out-feed tables to reduce snipe.